Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we are making a bag. We are graduating from the clutches and the wallets to do an honest to God, it can carry everything but your kitchen sink bag. And it is pretty easy to do. It is not a lot of pieces. This is the first bag pattern I ever attempted and it went really well. And so we're doing it again on camera for you guys. And we're gonna be using some canvas for the top. This is Rifle Paper Company from their Alice in Wonderland collection. And we're gonna be using cork for the first time on the bottom. I love using cork in bags because it's super durable, but it's really easy to sew with. And I used my bag for three months before I put it out as a sample in our shop just to see how it wore. And the answer is super well. The only wear and tear you could see on it was a little bit of color coming off the corners, which is gonna happen with any bag you have, but it stood up really well and I really abused it. I carried my laptop, all my kids stuff in it. I fell in the snow with it and it cleaned up fabulous. So we're going to make this. The pattern is called Tourist Tote by So Many Creations. And we've got everything you need over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Now let's get started making this fabulous bag. So the very first thing we need to do is fuse all of our pieces. I don't fuse anything to the cork bottom. I can never get it to stick and I feel like it has enough body without it. So I just kind of skip that step. But whenever I'm using canvas or quilting cotton or anything else that you're using um, other than the cork, I do fuse that. Um, one quick note. So for this one, this Alice, was not like dead center. Like you can see the fold of the fabric right here. So what I did was I moved it over so that the center of Alice's body was gonna be dead center with the measurement for my upper top. And I cut that first. Then I still had enough room to be able to cut my second piece from that same width of fabric, but Alice is not centered on this one. So for this one, I'm gonna just make this my bag front and then this one will be my bag back and then it'll be nice and pretty and perfectly centered for the part where it counts. So you always want to lay your decor bond with the shiny side up. That's the part that has the glue on it. So lay that down first and then you're going to put your other piece of fabric on top of that. And I'm kind of matching my corners. This canvas is really stiff so it stays in place really nicely. I can get it on there and know that it's gonna sit and stay where I want it to. But I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit my corner sides first. And you need to be patient and you need to have a really hot iron when you're doing this step. And that's the secret to getting everything to set and fuse the way you want it to. I did some of this work and I'm just gonna work my way across the sides here. Really just kinda leaving that iron down, especially when I'm working on the sides. But I did some pre-fusing yesterday at the shop and I was using some of the irons we have in the shop, which is not the Aliso. And I definitely noticed when I was getting ready to film today that not everything was stuck as good as it could have been. And so I'm gonna re-hit it with this iron, which gets a lot hotter. So you definitely want it on that linen cotton setting. You want it as hot as you can get it. Once you've gone all the way over, go ahead and flip it over and just kind of take a peek, make sure there's no bubbles or anything. Like I can see it, it hasn't totally fused down in this corner. There's like a little bubble where I can tell that it's not as attached as it could be. So I'm gonna just hit that corner one more time, then I'm ready to start sewing. So my biggest tip for you guys on time saving with this is to get everything cut and fused ahead of time. That way you're in cutting mode, you just do it all, you have it all ready to go. And then you're in fusing mode, you get it all fused and then you are just ready to sew and it just goes real fast than if you were just doing it piecemeal as you go. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is prepare my handles. And it actually is really easy once you have it all fused down, you're just gonna fold it in half and you're just going to press it hot dog style, if we remember back to when we were in grade school. And again, you want a nice hot iron for this because it'll help it take the fold and keep that crease. And first you're gonna do this all the way down. Once you have the entire handle pressed in half, then we're gonna fold our edges in. I like to do this in two steps because at this point the fabric is pretty thick. I'm using a canvas for my outside, I've got my decor on. It's just a lot to, to happen and get going in one place. So what I do is I just fold that into that center crease, the outside, and then I'm just gonna work my way down, doing one side at a time. Now for the second side, I'm gonna use it as a guide. So what I can do is I can fold it in half, meet that center, and then fold it over, and my edges should be nice and even when you look at them from any side. 
And once I've got that lined up, then I'm gonna go ahead and press that as well. And again, just continue doing this all the way down the strap for both of the straps. So when you're all done, you should have a strap that looks a little bit something like this with all your edges folded into the center. So a couple of things here, whenever you're going to work with canvas or cork, you wanna to switch to a jeans or denim needle. It's gonna help you get through those layers that are a little thicker. And whenever I'm top stitching, which is what we're about to do next, I like to switch and have a foot with a guide on it like this one. Um, this is a quarter inch foot. I normally do not like this guide right here, the little black bit below, because I feel like it gets in the way of accurate piecing. You have to pull your pins out before you're ready to. But for in this case, what I can do is I can snug it right up next to the edge of where I'm working. And then I'm gonna get really consistent top stitching and have a much more professional look than if I just tried to line it up with the edge of my presser foot. So we wanna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now this foot is a little specific because the hole isn't quite as large as normal. But so I'm just gonna kind of move it down as far as I can to where I can still get that needle down without hitting anything in the foot. And I'm gonna call that good. So just pay attention to your foot and the regular you know, the limitations of that. So I'm gonna start with the outside edge here. So I'm just gonna make sure everything gets tucked in here. You could pin this if you want to. Uh, you may find that binding clips are a little bit easier because this is very thick. Um, but I'm just going to start by sewing in here. And I am gonna do a back stitch here when I get started, just to make sure that everything is nice and secure because it's not like quilting where we're gonna cross over those lines a ton of times. All right, so I'm doing that folded edge first, and I've got the edge lined up with that guide, and then I'm just really watching the guide. I'm making sure that my fabric is nice and in line with it. That way I can keep a nice steady stitch. I'm gonna back stitch again when I get to that end, just to get everything nice and secure. Then we're gonna turn it around and go down the other side. All right, so here you can see we've got some really consistent top stitching. It looks very nice. It's nice and even from both edges. And I actually used a really light gray thread with this. It's number 2615 from Aurifil. And I like it because it, it blends nicely with all the blues that I'm using, but it also means that I have to be really careful with that top stitch because it is gonna show up and be visible. So using that foot is definitely a plus and helps make your job easier. All right, I'm gonna do that to the other hand, then we'll move on. So I've done a few things to prepare my outside top to get it ready to put the bag handles on. The first thing I did is I drew a line straight down the center. It might be a little hard to see, but there's a little pink line coming up between Alice's legs and then above her head as well. So that way I can measure out from the center. The exact measurements of where you're supposed to draw these lines and place these handles is in the pattern to go along with this, the tourist tote, which you can get on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. So then I took my friction gel pen and I measured out from the center to hit where the part of my handle is supposed to be. And I drew that line all the way up. I drew a little stop right here. There's like a little horizontal hash mark there. And that'll help me tell me where to stop and stitch down the rest of the way. So now that I had those lines marked, I'm gonna do a few things here. First, I'm gonna take a clip because that is a lot easier to use than pins at this point, because we're getting a little thick with all those seams and the decor bond. And I'm going to just clip the bottom in place so that it's even with that line that I drew. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep it in line as I go. You could try to pin through this if you really wanted to. But as I sew this, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm keeping the edge in line with the line that I drew. And I'm putting the folded edge in line next to that because I think we're gonna see the other part more the, the nice neat edge where it's just the one fold and I'd rather have that be facing the outside of the bag. So then we're gonna take our bag handle. We're gonna wrap it around and again, make sure that you don't have a twist up here. You want it to just be nice and even. And now I'm gonna line this up with the bottom over here. And again, I'm keeping it nice and in line with that guideline that I drew and I'm going to place a little clip down here as well to help hold that in place. So now taking it one half of the handle at a time, I'm gonna stitch all the way up to where it's time to go over. Then I'm gonna cross over and stitch all the way back down. And I'm going to do that still using 
the guide foot so that way I can stay right over this line. Now feel free to go over this a couple of times to add extra stability to your bag handles. The first time I made one, my dog got really excited and jumped up and her paw caught like right here and it just ripped it down and I was able to mend it just fine. But if I would have done it a couple of times as opposed to just the one time, that might not have happened. So go over it two, three times and just making sure that you're staying over your stitching line so that way you can't tell that you're stitching several times. So we're gonna do this for both sides of the bag and then we're gonna come back and sad our bag bottom. Just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce those stitches quite a bit at the beginning. So now what I'm doing is I'm just lining up, I've got my line that I drew right here and I'm just lining up the left edge of that with the line and just kind of holding it in place. And I'm trying to stitch and follow that same guide so that I'm going straight over the same stitching line I did before. Make sure I'm staying in line with that line over there. All right, so I've come to the point where I need to change and go over and the specific measurement from the top I need to be. So I'm just gonna turn the work and stitch across to that next top stitching line. Then I'm gonna turn everything again Kind of roll up the side here so I can have some space. We're gonna stitch right back down. Again, I'm gonna reinforce those stitches again at the bottom. Now I'm gonna repeat a second time. You could even do as many as three. All right, so I'm gonna repeat that on the other half of the bag handle and then repeat it all on the other half. So I used a friction gel pen to mark this and it goes away with heat. So as soon as I'm done, I wanna get the iron on and make sure I get rid of all those marks so that way they aren't on the final bag. I find you really kinda of have to get the tip of your iron in along those marks because you really like sewed right next to that line. And so it's kind of impossible to just like draw right over it. All right, so now that we have this, it's time to complete the half of our bag by adding our bag bottom. I'm gonna use cork for this. I have used cork for bag bottoms before and I really love it. It's very durable and I used one as a test sample for three months before we put it out in the shop. The only wear and tear on it was a little bit of color was coming off in the corners and that is it and that's you know to be expected with any bag. And I used canvas for the top on that one and cork again on the bottom. Cause you know it's expensive to make bags yourself. It's almost the same price as buying one but you know why you know, pay the money for it when you do it yourself. That's a common crafting theme. Uh, but anyway, so if you're gonna do it, you wanna do it with the materials that are gonna last for a long time. That's why I always love the canvas and cork combination because it really wears very well over time. And like, I abuse that bag. I carried my laptop around it, all my kids crap in it. I fell in the snow in it and got it all dirty and it just wiped clean and everything was really great with it. It looks great. So I am using this fun navy print. Uh, it is almost black. It kind of looks black when you're not seeing it, but it definitely pulls out a lot of the blues in here, which I really like. And it's not as stark as the, the black version that we have. So I'm just gonna lay this right sides together, just like I would for anything. And with cork, you can press it, you can sew through it, you can cut it with a rotary cutter. It actually cuts easier than the canvas. It's really easy to work with, but you want to use binding clips and that denim needle when you're working with it, it makes life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clip on the corner right here and right here. You could also clip throughout here if you want, but for me, as long as I get those corners together, I'm good to go. So again, I'm gonna use that guide foot on my machine because that's gonna help me stay right next to this and sew my nice quarter inch seam. And of course I've got right sides together here. Just like always, I like to reinforce those beginning stitches so that we have a nice strong seam. Now I'm just gonna sew my quarter inch seam all the way down. It's a little bulkier when you get to those handles, so just anticipate that. Then 
when I get to my ends, I can go ahead and undo that clip. And again, I'm going to reinforce those stitches. This combination of the canvas with the cork and then also that de Corbon, I mean, this is really sturdy stuff, so there's almost no easing in that you have to do, which is lovely. So here's where you really see the magic of the cork. I'm gonna press this as if it were regular fabric and it will hold the fold. So I'm gonna press it so that the seam is underneath the cork because that's where the bag bottom is going to be. It's going to like to stay there. And I'm just gonna kind of put my iron over it. And it is just really holding that fold real nice. Even just pressing it over is sometimes enough. All right, so now I'm gonna change my stitch so that I'm back to that eighth of an inch stitch. And I'm gonna top stitch along the top or the bottom here and then also inside here. I'm just gonna place that guide foot right in the fold line of where this is so that I can get nice consistent stitching. So I'm gonna start by stitching along the cork side, the bag bottom, and I've got that guide right in where that fold is. And I'm just gonna move my needle over a little bit. So that way we're making sure to get all of that seam in there. You have to do a little bit of maneuvering of your fabric because like I said, it is pretty sturdy. So it's not gonna bend real easy at this point. It is totally doable. But it also means you won't have a floppy bag at the end, which is always good. That is looking very nice. My stitches are nice and even and they are evenly spaced away from the edge thanks to that guide foot. So now it's time to cut the corners out of our lining and our exterior pieces. I'm showing you this on the lining first because what I did is I drew out the measurement on here, then I'm gonna cut it with scissors. I feel like that's a little safer than going at it with a rotary cutter because you don't wanna overcut. All right, so your bottoms are gonna look like this where the corners are clipped out. Now we're going to attach them to our front pieces. So I have my one front piece here. I've already clipped my corners down here as well. What I wanna do is fold this handle down so it is out of the way and it's not gonna get in the way of when we're sewing. Then I'm gonna lay this on top and I'm gonna match up my corners and I'm gonna secure it with those binding clips. Again, you could pin, but I use really thick fabric with that canvas and so I just want to go with the pins and plus you're never gonna get it to lay flat because you have the handles under here so I want that flexibility as I'm sewing. All right, now I'm gonna stitch across the top of this with a quarter inch stitch. Just like we've been doing all along, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse those stitches at the beginning to go ahead and anchor those stitches. Again, this is not quilting, so you wanna make sure that that can withhold the use and abuse a bag is gonna get. All right, as I get closer to where the handle is underneath here, I need to make sure that I can get this laying as flat as I can, and you're just gonna to have to manipulate it kind of in an as-you-go situation. As I come to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that clip, and then again, go ahead and reinforce those stitches. Now I'm gonna repeat and do the other half. So now when you open this up, your bag handles are going to be free and your lining is going to be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up real quick and set that seam and then we're gonna press it. So I'm pressing it so that the seam is tucked right underneath there and I kinda use my fingernails to push it out to make sure that that seam is as forward as possible. Then I'm gonna take my iron and go ahead and really press very well. This is also a good opportunity that if you like to use a spray starch or a spray salt alternative, this is a good time to use it. It'll really help set that in place. All right, that's looking pretty good. We've got it nice and pressed flat. We have our two halves and now we're ready to start joining them. So now here's where it gets a little interesting. What we're going to do is we're gonna open the bag completely. I'm gonna lay mine sideways so that we can kind of see both sides on camera at the same time. Then you're gonna take your other half and you're gonna do the same thing and you're gonna match your lining sides and your outside sides. So they're gonna be facing each other like that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pin all the way along this and I wanna make sure that my seams are going toward the lining side. So I want them to be pressed that way when I'm pinning. And so first I'm just gonna pin all the way along my two sides. When you get to the center bit, really take your time 
and make sure that those seams are right on top of each other and that both seams are pointing toward the lining side because that's where everything's gonna join and you're gonna be able to tell if you don't take your time and be careful here. On this side, I'm paying attention to where my canvas pieces are. I wanna make sure that those folds are lined up right on top of each other. And then I'm gonna pin just to the right so that I'm not pinning through the cork, I'm pinning just next to it. And I'm just gonna hold these ends together with a binding clip and then do like one more pin right there. I'm gonna switch my feet out back to my regular quarter inch stitch. Because remember I said at the beginning that I really don't like the ones with the guide whenever you have to be precise with your pinning and this is a moment where we really do. So I just wanna have my regular quarter inch foot on at this point so that way I can make sure that I can leave those pins in to the last possible moment so I can get great joints where those bag seams come together. So I'm gonna to start at the top and again, we're gonna reinforce those seams so that way we have a really sturdy corner. Then I'm gonna sew along until my needle is down in the first part of that seam allowance where the cork is. And only then do I remove my pin. That way everything's gonna to come together just lovely on the outside of that bag. In this case, I'm gonna sew right up to that pin where the seam allowances are for our, the difference between our outside and our inside. And again, remove that pin at the last possible minute so we have a great join there too. And again, when you get all the way down to the bottom, make sure you reinforce those stitches so you've got a great secure corner. Now repeat on the other side. So now we're gonna sew our bag bottom together. For this part, I'm gonna use clips again because I don't wanna use any pins on the cork because I don't wanna leave any holes in it. Just clipping together my corners, but you can use as many pins as you like. As long as we're doing the bottoms, I'm going to do the bottom on this side too. There's one difference though. We wanna leave an opening for turning. Now the first time I did this, I thought I left a large enough opening for turning and I was wrong. I definitely ripped them right open. So I'm really just going to do maybe about two inches of uh, turning here and then I'm just going to stitch the rest up by hand once we get the bag together. So what I like to do when I do this is I will pin my corners to keep those nice and aligned and then I put a second pin to remind myself that hey it's time to stop now. So I'm just going in about two inches or so and I'm going to put my second pin and so I'm just going to sew from here to here reinforcing my stitches in both places and leaving the rest of the center opening for turning. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side so that at least my corners are sewn by machine, but then that center part will be by hand later. Again, reinforce those stitches. So you have a nice strong corner. We're gonna turn it around now. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just we're only gonna go in about two inches from the corner so we have a nice big opening for turning. Stitch in place. Reinforce those stitches. So until I get to about that pin, and this is very important, definitely reinforce your stitches a lot at this point because this is where you're gonna have a lot of stress where you are trying to turn that bag. So we've got one more step to do before we're able to turn this bag right side out, and that's to sew our corners together. I'm gonna to show you on the lining piece because the cork I have is very dark and I think you're gonna be able to see better on this section. Basically what you do is you're just going to open it up like this so that you essentially have a nice straight line like you do here. And then you wanna press those seams in opposite directions. Doesn't really matter which way for what side or anything. Just as long as they're nesting and I've got my back seam here going this way and this seam going that way. I'm gonna go ahead and for the lining fabric anyway, put a pin in. For the cork, I'm going to use a clip because again, no pins there. And then what I find helpful in order to keep this nice and straight is also to just go ahead and do a little pin at the corner as well. And then that helps give you a nice straight line to sew with, which is what you should be having to give you that nice 
boxy finish. Now it's tempting to do the other corner, but there's so much interfacing in this that it just gets a little stiff and unwieldy. So I'm only gonna pin up one corner at a time and then sew it and then repeat and make my way around the bags until I've done all four corners. All right, so just like always, I'm reinforcing those stitches when I get started. This is gonna have the most stress of anything in the bag. So we want it to be nice and strong. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch until I hit that seam allowance and then pull my pin or unclip your clip if that's what you're using. And then keep on sewing all the way to the end. Reinforce those stitches really well. I'm gonna do it a second time here. All right, so just repeat those steps for all four corners. All right, so now we have something that looks kind of large and unwieldy, but you left your opening for turning in the bottom. And so what you're going to do is you're gonna take your hand and reach into that, and you're gonna grab for the bottom of the bag. And you're gonna start pulling that through. I'm gonna to switch to my right hand. And you want to be kind of gentle because you're gonna be pulling a lot through here. You're not gonna damage the fabric or the cork by doing this, but you can rip open those stitches. So you just kinda wanna be gentle as you're pulling everything through, just do it a little bit at a time. And if you do rip those stitches, it's not a big deal. You can fix it by hand later. I got most of it through, so now I'm just kinda pushing, binding through. All right, so now we've got it all the right sides facing out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is again, put my hand back through that opening and I'm just gonna push out all of my corners. Just gonna use my fingertips to poke the points of the bag out on the bottoms to get that shaping. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna start stuffing the lining inside. And then I'm gonna form that as well. Just of course it's going outside instead of in like we were before. All right, so we've got something that is looking like a bag. We have two more steps and then we're all done. First, we're going to top stitch around this top part. If you want, you can give it a little press first. I find because I'm using the canvas that if I just kind of run my fingers across the top of it, it kind of smooths it back out a little bit and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna go put that guide foot back on so that I can get nice even top stitching all around. And then I just have to sew up that hole in the bottom. I do that by hand with a little whip stitch so we won't show that on screen because it's a pretty simple stitch, but we just have one little step left here and then you've got everything you need to know to make this bag yourself. So for this part, I'm actually gonna take the extension table off of my machine. That's gonna give me the ability to kind of let everything go around if ever so like a sleeve or a garment. It's a pretty similar thing. I'm gonna start on the back because if I don't get my stitches to come together perfectly at the end, I'd rather it be on the back in an inconspicuous place. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna reinforce those stitches again and just keeping the edge even with that guide foot and my corners where everything turns nice and crisp, I'm just gonna sew around the entire top of the bag. And I'm just trying to make sure that that lining is rolled to the inside so that you don't see it from the outside of the bag. I'm gonna go past about an inch or so where I started and then I'm gonna reinforce those stitches and clip my threads. So here we are, we have our finished bag. Again, just do a little bit of whip stitching to close up that lining hole in the bottom. You could sew it on your sewing machine too, but I like to hand stitch it because then it's pretty invisible. And I just love the way this bag turns out. It is huge, it fits everything. I've carried my laptop around this bag, all my stuff for my kid. Uh, knitting projects, if you are a knitter too, you can fit like a whole sweater and then some, like a good chunk of your yarn stash really in here. And it really is, a pretty easy one to do. The first time I did it, it was the first bag I ever made and I was able to do it all from start to finish, including cutting, infusing all the interfacing in about four hours and I used the bag the next day. So that is a good project. Again, this is called the Tourist Tote 
and we have all the supplies you need to make it over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com and we are going to have a limited amount of kits of this available as well so if you like the way that this one turned out with a nice navy bottom and then the alice in wonderland fabric from rifle paper company up top we can do that we even are going to do the lining that's also from rifle paper company a different line but it goes together really well I really like this fabric. I think it is adorable. And I actually have the illustrated book that uh, Rifle Paper Company did as well. That I'm reading to my daughter. So the second she saw this, she's like, it's Alice. And I was like, yes, it is. So it's a really fun one. If you've got a book lover in your family, this is a good one to make for them. And again, super easy. It's only like six pieces and it goes just super, super fast. So great project if you are not so sure about bags and you want to give it a first try, this is a good one to do. Thanks so much for following along. Until next time, happy quilting. Lady, my goodness gracious. What is wrong with you today? Sorry, the dog has lost her mind. I think literally. She just turned 15. I think she's seen now now. Kenny, come on. Not right now. Dang cat. Come on, get down. Get down. Get down. Cat is about to get kicked out of here.